Hello everyone, it's Terry from Danu's Irish Herb Garden. Um, last time I was speaking to you I was talking about saving seeds and I just want to continue on with that for another, for another film. So what I have here are two types of brassica. This is pak choy and this is kale and they look surprisingly similar but if you look a little bit closer you can see that the pak choy has fatter little seed pods than does the kale which are longer and thinner. So these have been drying and they're almost ready to pop the seeds out. I'll just demonstrate. I'll just take one little seed pod off and all you do is you split it along with your fingernail and um, you can see all the little seeds inside. Now they're still bright green so I'm going to leave them another few days before I open them because I do want them to be drier than that and then I'll just pop those onto a plate, label them and hey presto I've got enough seeds for everybody in the neighbourhood. Okay so today um, one of the most popular crops that people like to grow are tomatoes and cucumbers. Seed saving with tomatoes and cucumbers is slightly different because they're called wet seeds and that means the seeds are inside a wet gloopy medium that protects the seeds and we need to get rid of it. So it's so simple all you need to, is a glass. I'm using a whiskey glass here because we are on a health kick at the moment so it's not likely to be used for some time. Just cut open your tomato and you just simply scrape out the seeds and the pulp, everything that's there and you just pop it into the glass. You see it's very wet. It's protected by this gloopy kind of jelly stuff. I mean you only need one seed for um, one plant of course but it's always a good idea to have more so that you can share. So there now. You could still use the flesh of this tomato if you wanted to. It's still perfectly good to eat. So there we've got quite a bit of seed and gloop and I've chosen this particular tomato because I think it's got some good properties in that it was in the greenhouse and long forgotten about. So despite not being watered very often and tomatoes are considered to be very thirsty plants, it has survived and flourished. So to me that suggests that as a parent plant it's going to pass on those qualities to its offspring and we should get a really hardy harvest next year. Um, all I do now with this is I'm just going to cover it with water and we leave that sit for a day or two and the gloop or the jelly around the seed will rise up to the top and the seeds that are viable will go down to the bottom of the glass. And here we've got a, a cucumber and it's the same process. I'm just going to cut that cucumber roughly into segments. Lots and lots of seeds. Same thing, you just take a glass, you scoop those seeds out. I think there's different methods for saving cucumber seeds. Some people wait until the cucumber is pretty ripe and kind of getting a little bit soft and smelly but I've also seen it done like this as well. So I'm just scraping out all the seeds and the gloop and the kind of jelly stuff and a lot of water because cucumbers are full of water and in they go. Now I just mention as well these tomato and cucumber seeds are um, hybrid, uh, sorry they're heritage seeds so they're open pollinated and they're heritage seeds so that means their offspring these seeds here are going to be true they're going to be exactly they're going to be just like their parents if you're using an f1 hybrid which is perfectly okay it's just that be aware that if you save a hybrid seed an f1 hybrid seed 
it could revert back to one of its parents. So it could have, uh, you know, less um, staying power. It might not be as tasty. It might not be as big. There could be all things that um, are only in that plant because it's a hybrid. So you may not get the same qualities again because it might, the offspring might resort, revert back to what the original parents were like. So there's my cucumbers and same thing, just top them up with water and we leave them then for a few days until that separation occurs between the viable seeds going to the bottom and the gloop and the jelly and anything that you don't want goes to the top. So I've already done it, so I'm going to show you what happens next. These are the cucumber seeds. So you can see there are lots of seeds around the bottom. There's material that's floating now that I've moved the liquid. It's suspended in the, in the water. And on the top, there's a kind of film, a little bit of mold on there, but I'm just going to scrape it off. There's a few seeds there that have come up to the top. I don't want those because they're not viable. So I'm going to take those out. I'm going to take anything else out that's not at the bottom. Whoops. So now I'm just going to pour it through a sieve and I'll be left with nice, clean, viable seeds. I'm just going to give them a little rinse. So there's the seeds and I'm just going to pop them onto a plate that has um, kitchen paper or tissue or something and you just leave them to dry for a couple of days on the tissue or kitchen paper. And now I'll just show you the tomato. This too has um, a frothy coat on the top with a little bit of mould. I'm just going to scoop it off. There it is. I'm going to take out anything that's um, floating up to the surface because they're not viable. So it's a, quite a bit more tricky than just opening the kale pod or um, the flower seeds I was showing you last week. But it's worth doing. Give it a rinse. And I'm just going to pop it onto pop all those little seeds onto the tissue. These seeds will sit on the tissue until they're dry and you'll know when they're dry because they'll just lift off easily. At the moment they're all clustered together so I'm just spreading them out. Whoops. There. You can see that even though it's a bit more tricky and there's a few more steps than just opening a kale pod, it doesn't actually take a lot of effort to get seeds for next year. So obviously you can do more if you want to. It's always a good idea to do more because then you have surplus if the first lot are attacked by pests or anything or if something should happen. And you can always share them with people. Civil disobedience. So this is today's tomato. I'm just going to leave it on the windowsill. And this is today's uh, cucumber. And they just ferment away um, for a couple of days until the, um, the protective jelly or pulp around the seeds has separated. And then I'll do the same again. So I'm going to have lots of cucumber and tomato seeds for next year, just from these two simple steps. Once your seeds have finished drying on here, um, you put them in your little paper envelope or a little plastic bag, whatever method you prefer to use, label them um, 
and then you store them in a dry, cool, dark place. You can store them in the fridge if you like because that will protect them from germinating. Because you know, you could keep them in the house and maybe over winter if you have if you have extra heating on in the house, it could trigger germination. So it's best to keep them somewhere really cool, but definitely not a damp place. So don't leave them in a shed. Don't leave them in a polytunnel or anywhere like that. Cool, dark, preferably the fridge, but just do your best around the house wherever you can. And um, don't forget to label. Keep saying that because so many times I haven't labeled. Even this year, I have seeds that I didn't label. And then you have no idea what they're going to be and you don't want to waste them. So you have to sow them and you might end up with something you didn't actually want. Give it a go yourself. Choose something that's really easy, like the nasturtiums. And when you get that sense of pride and empowerment from saving something as simple as a nasturtium seed, you can move on and keep moving and keep trying different seeds until you've got the hang of it. And if it doesn't work out, you haven't lost anything except a little bit of time. And if it does work out, well, you've got again that sense of fulfillment and probably saved a lot of money because seed prices are going up and up and up all the time. And I suspect they'll be even higher next time you're buying them just because of the situation we find ourselves in. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you something to think about and something to do. And if you did enjoy it, please subscribe and hit the bell button thing and um, have a great weekend. Bye.